Yeah, Jim, and this goes both ways. Drivers and pedestrians are being warned to look out for each other. And right here along Maryland Parkway, for instance, they want people in the crosswalk, not near it. And people who live and work nearby, well, they tell me they appreciate the enforcement. Jessica Aki's death has led to a domino effect concerning two rejuvenized businesses. We are at the one on the west side, the Department of Business and Industry. They placed this stop work order, shutting down the doors here. Uh, many, even though that this is the case, rejuvenized workers are still standing by the business safety. Tattoo artists in Las Vegas are going full throttle on anyone wanting to get ink. Darian Michael Greenan, who heads up indelible tattoos inside a Central Valley shop, loves the vibe coming his way. The biggest thing is like the connection with the people and uh, it's just like living, breathing art on somebody. Out on the strip at Rockstar Tattoos, artist Steve Rivas sees the tourists coming. I think uh, tattooing is more uh, accepted nowadays. So it's way more popular, I think. But there is a dark side. Some girls have the tattoos, or we call branding. Lieutenant Patricia Spencer with Las Vegas Metro Vice Division has seen the evils associated with tattoos when it comes to sex trafficking. Some girls have a logo, they may have a symbol, a sign or a symbol, or they may have their pimp's actual name. These pictures show the brutality pimps inflict on their women. Police have documented the torture of prostitutes getting their bodies burned to erase tattoos from the past. Tattoo signifies, could signify a lot of things. It solidifies the bond with the pimp. It shows loyalty, which is the ultimate to a pimp. You're showing loyalty, you're putting their name on you. And during an encounter with authorities, expect police to put their eyes on you scanning your tattoos for clues. Well, of course they're helpful. I mean, uh, it could be, it helps us identify that person. Artist Darian Geenan has inked women demanding their pimp's brand. I have done a couple of those things. The PAMP, he wasn't there, but the girl was asking for it and clarifying that that was what she was doing, for sure. Then there is the increasing chance of being injected with contaminated ink, a problem that recently forced the Food and Drug Administration to issue both a warning and a recall to consumers after certain inks tested positive for dangerous bacteria. For this particular kind, it comes from a consumer re uh, complaint. Dr. Kaisen Chu with the FDA test tattoo inks. He's seen firsthand serious health risks arise from tainted ink. Manufacturer is producing the ink. They may use um, water that are not uh, set. They are not being decontaminated. And so when they do that, uh, they're introducing the pathogens into the tattoo inks. Tattoos are considered a cosmetic procedure and don't get the same scrutiny as medical drugs. So if you choose to ink up, beware. Cosmetics, unlike, say, medical devices or drugs, do not have to be pre-tested before they enter the market. There's no requirement for tattoo inks to be sterile. All in all, Guinan likes to think of the positives of tattooing. Tattoos are a test of time. It's the sound all firefighters at Las Vegas Fire and Rescue, Fire Station 1, are ready to hear, and hear often. Rescue 301, engine 10. The gentle voice following the tone directs all inside to action and the possible dangers ahead. The race is to save lives, extinguish fires, and cut through the threat of disaster. Engine eight from command, you copy roof. Fire station one from time to time is the busiest in the nation. We have uh, light smoke showing from several of the apartments. On this day, Battalion Chief Robert Pitts is figuring out the strategy for an attack on a fire at a vacant apartment. There's a lot of unknowns that you try to think of and, and we're taught as we're coming in to try to visualize the scene and to anticipate some of the unknowns that would be happening. The unknown every day at Fire Station 1 is the volume of calls. On any given day, the volume of calls can range anywhere from 100 to 200, 4 to 8 per hour. That's a lot of calls. It is a lot of calls. Some departments in the country don't run that much in a year. Captain Mitch Steinberg says the busyness 
is for an assortment of reasons. We're in a downtown station and we're in one of the busiest areas in the country as far as tourists go. And we actually have a lot of business that's moving down there now too. The calls just don't involve fires. There are plenty of rescues, lots of accidents. Cars end up on their sides, pedestrians are struck. Near the Fremont Street Experience, this rescue crew finds a casino worker injured on a crosswalk. A car nicked her. You can kind of tell when we came up that she wasn't necessarily injured that bad because she was up looking at us. Engine 106 available on scene. Then there are plenty of bogus pleas for help. Someone dialed 911 for a woman complaining about chest pains. But she was nowhere to be found when the fire station one crew arrived. The false alarms can be stressful and taxing, but... Our main concern is the life of any civilians. Just keep going all the way up Stewart. Battalion Chief Lawrence Wycliffe has been with the fire station over 20 years. He doesn't see the station ever slowing down. When the stations were developed, Station 1 was developed as a large station to take care of an area of town, and that's when the city had about 200,000 people. Well, now that we have about 600,000 people, Downtown is a lot more clustered. Storm on the 21 rescue 301. Someone responding on a fire in a building. Through it all, this is what all here love to do. I've always wanted to be a firefighter, and you know, I love being busy. I love going on calls. You almost can't put a price on that when you get to help people in, in challenging situations. How you doing hey, today, bud? Going? Step Good. inside Charlie yeah. Pike's hardware store in Tonopah, Nevada, and you can find just about anything. If I don't have it, I can get it for them. From bolts to kitty litter, duct tape to work gloves. But this week, even Charlie himself is at a loss for what's going on just down the street. Nothing good can come from it. His town's only hospital, Nye Regional Medical Center, is closing its doors. I characterize it as the hospital is the patient and we're dying. Wayne Allen is the hospital CEO who says the facility is simply no longer financially viable. Not enough cash flow, not enough volume in this small mining town. The expenses, you've got to have those expenses here of certain individuals, regardless of the numbers. We got a 24 7, 365 day emergency department. We pay those doctors whether they see one patient. Or, or 20. Now hospital staff is saying goodbye and locking up. Even the nearby clinic will only stay open for scheduled doctor's appointments another two weeks. The nearest hospital now, 100 miles away in Hawthorne. To put this in perspective, Tonopah losing this hospital would be like Las Vegas losing UMC. The big question, what happens now? Well, there is still a volunteer ambulance service in town, but critical care patients will have to be flown out to either Las Vegas or Reno. We're tiny, but we're, we're of value. Nurse Teresa Campbell has worked here nearly 30 years. The community needs something. They have to have something, whether it be, you know, a Band-Aid station, something because I have grandchildren here. Still, trouble here did not develop overnight. Allen says the hospital has been in trouble for several years, despite Nye County investing more than $2 million in an effort to keep it afloat. We're gone. We're gone today. We're, we're it's past. We're gone. It's past 12 noon. Leaving residents like Charlie Pike wondering what's next for Tonopah. The sports programs that I'm sure we're going to be affected by that. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Have a good weekend. Denise Roche, News 3.